yeah. Welcome back. It's time for the roundtable. And this week in the headlines, turns out there's a problem with what consumers are doing with all that cash they're saving at the pump. And on the hiring front, jobs are up in the district, but down in the Washington suburbs and further from home, our economist says the blue seas surrounding Greece are still bleeding red, and that could have big implications even here in the U.S. Joining us today, noted economist Peter Morisi from the University of Maryland's Smith School of Business, and the reporter not afraid to tell Peter when he's wrong, Josh Boak, business reporter for the Associated Press. Gentlemen, let's get ready to run because we're already fighting during the break. Peter, you and I have fought about Greece before, but there are big implications. What happened this week and why does it matter? Well, it's becoming increasingly obvious that Greece doesn't have enough money and never will to pay its debts. They have to be cut in half. It's like Radio Shack. It has to go Chapter 11. The rest of Europe toys. doesn't want to accommodate. As a consequence, it is likely to exit the, the Eurozone or they'll paper it over in some way. But the question is, what are the implications for Spain, Italy, Portugal, the other countries with austerity. Greece, not much of an effect on our financial markets. Italy, Spain, very large. Now, Josh, Peter, and I have thought about this before because I think the Greeks have no one but themselves to blame. They don't always pay their taxes, don't think that it's common to do that. The Germans are being pretty tough with them. Uh, does any of this matter? Should the Germans back down? Should the Greeks back down? What's the wider implication here? If they don't reach a solution, everyone's going to end up with Greek yogurt on, on their face, right? I mean, at the end Sold of the day, the that's what matters. <laughs> Posturing, kind of the desire to look tough, to stand up, isn't going to help correct the fundamental problem that Peter outlined. There's too much debt, not enough economic growth. Christine Lagarde and Angela Merkel have their fingerprints all over this austerity program. It's obvious that it has failed, and it's failed manifestly, and what they see at stake is their legacy. There's too much personality involved in this debate, in this discussion, and not enough substance. They're in the room. They can't even agree about the facts. It's hard to see how they're going to get out of this. We don't even have time to get to all the problems posed by Ukraine, Russia, implications of gas prices overseas, because I want to turn uh, back to the U.S. and talk, Josh, about what we're seeing here. Let's start with jobs in our region. Up in the district where we need jobs, but down in the suburbs, what's going on here? Well, it's essentially uh, somewhat stagnant in the suburbs. We only added about 6,000 jobs in the D.C. suburbs over the last year, as opposed to 14,600 inside the district proper. And this is one of these real big questions that we need to have. Why do we have this massive influx to the district, but we're seeing growth cut short in the suburbs? And the answer is, you're seeing that drop off in government but spending. Nationally, nationally, it's the cities that are growing these days, not the suburbs, because more and more that's where people want to live. And so what we're seeing here is not abnormal. This is very much like the crisis of the 50s and 60s. Why are our cities not growing, but the suburbs are? Well, now things are correcting again, and we're going to have to rethink public policy. For one thing, when we talk about infrastructure in America, it should not be about building yet another subway even further into the distant suburbs, but rather widening the pipeline close in so that we can move people around where they want to live. Okay, now you've opened that whole can of worms. I'm going to let viewers reach out directly to you on that because I'm going to switch the topic once again. I go against the grain. I lived in the district for the last 30 years, and then I moved out to uh, Maryland this year. Uh, so, Josh, let me, uh, well, 30, no. Josh, let me ask you, though, about this problem about savings at the gasoline pump. People are saving cash, but they're not spending it. They're putting it in their pockets, and that's not where economists want it. That's exactly what the government data is showing. Now, we're not entirely sure what's happening, but the retail sales data came out this past week. And what we saw was that if you take gas out of the way, spending was flat from December mm. to January, seasonally adjusted. Now, the one area where we see growth is restaurants. That's the big growth area as far as spending. But there's another possibility of what's going on is that people are spending more money on services. Tell him if he's wrong, all Peter. Those, he's gonna all tell those you. health clubs in the district that charge $30 a session, that's where the money can go, but you're not going to see that in the retail sales report. Those actually do count as retail sales. I took apart the report, and if you take out gasoline and uh, autos and so forth, it's actually up a bit. The basic problem the U.S. economy faces right now is when oil prices go down, people cut down on drilling right then and now. And that cuts employment and it cuts investment and so forth. But it's taking people a while to get used to the notion that they have all of this additional money in their pockets, as much as $1,000 and more a year for some families. And it takes some time to figure out what to do with it and also for them to believe that it's going to continue. 
that's very critical. I think we've got to figure out a way to be a savings economy and not rely so much on consumer spending. Uh, kudos to Americans for finally putting some savings in their pocket and not driving up their credit card debt. It's time for our new feature that is the prop quiz that I like to launch on our guests because they're so smart at the end of each show. So Josh Folk, Peter Morisi, here's my question for you today. Sunday, the deadline to sign up for Obamacare, the White House out there trying to get more young people, especially and healthy people, to sign up. Josh, by the end of Sunday, are they going to end up exceeding expectations and getting more people signed up or is it going to be a disappointment it's like asking who shot jr it might all just be a frenzied dream state at the end of the day what really matters is not just how many people signed up but are they getting the best in the effective care and is it being implemented in ways that create an obamacare that lasts past the obama yeah, presidency yeah, yeah. i'm not sure about that Peter. so in other words i'll give in no no, no more people, not enough will sign up. Not enough. Okay, Peter, great that we want to talk about how effective the system is, but we're not there yet. We still have to have people signing up. Are they going to exceed expectations with the sign up on Sunday, or is it going to fall flat? I think they will not exceed expectations. This year, some six million people are going to be paying fines for not having signed up last year, and they won't have the coverage they need. One of the things we're learning is a lot of people sign up for the bronze plan, and those plans are not as good as the ones they had to give up. I mean, they're discovering they have to have cancer and have been in the hospital 90 days before they've spent enough money, and by that time, they're broke. You know, the whole thing's absurd. It's not insurance. Mr. Obama used to talk about when he was uh, a young person. We have 15 he had seconds to show, and you have policy. to tell me what you would do to solve the entire health care problem if you think the solution right now is absurd. Ten you seconds. Don't have time ten for seconds. That. Benchmark it against the German system. Pay for drugs in America with the drug companies charge in Germany. Benchmark America's hospitals against Germany. They spend 50% less than we do. Mr. President, call me. I've got the answers all from Peter Morisi. Thanks for joining us.